kase na tembe na si yo yo tu Amen, 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 amen. It is nice seeing you. Come on, look at your neighbor, the one you're seated next to. Come on, mjui jina jamani. Mjui jina. Na kama unamjua jina moja, muulize jina ya ine. Kila mtu anakuanga na majina tatu za edina ya ine. Muulize jina yako ya ine ni gani. Iyo nickname. Muulize wana kuitanga nani nyumbani. Just welcome them to the house of the Lord and tell them it's nice seeing you. If you love their suit, tell them I love I like this suit. Welcome them to the house of the Lord. Yes, and just request them Vizuri to be upstanding as you praise the Lord. So I can request you to be upstanding uh, as you praise the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sasa muambie, jirani, mshike mkono na mnai. Shake the hand of your neighbor. Shake the hand. I don't, I don't see people interacting. Shake the hand of your neighbor. Shake the hand of your neighbor. Shake the hand of your neighbor. Muambie, it is time to praise the Lord. It's time to praise the Lord. It is time to praise the Lord for He is a good God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Haya. Watch and you know my coffee. Watch and you know my coffee. Oh, yes. Jamani, I am out of Wazo. I am out of the country of Wazo. Let me see the most you know to do. Most you know to do. Come on, just give me love. I sing for dance. Shit! 
Moderator, uh, 
Uh, thank you. We may take our seats. And I request the worship committee, uh, whoever was assigned, to come and read us with the opening prayers. Worship committee. Let us pray. We are thankful, our God, for this Father that you've brought us. And you've been faithful because every time we've asked you to be with us since yesterday, we have seen your goodness. And now, Lord, as we get into this session, we ask for the fullness of your spirit that we shall discern that which it is you desire for us at such a time as this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, thank you so much. At uh, this time, moderator, we would uh, request the Mount Oris choir to come and present a number. Mount Horace. Tum 
Tumikie mungu Alie muzo na mwamba wetu Alie totoa utu mwani Katu weka emani mwake Katika ufalme wake Tuka esabi wa haki Kwa unyofu wa mewa yenu Kwa ukweli na haki yake Tumikie mungu Alie muzo na mwamba wetu Alie totoa utu mwani Katu weka emani mwake Katika ufalme wake Tuka esabi wa haki Mimi hapa na nyumba yangu Tuta mtumiki ya bwana Tuta mtumiki ya bwana Kali mwisho wa dahari Mimi hapa na nyumba yangu Tuta mtumiki ya bwana Tuta mtumiki ya bwana Kali mwisho wa dahari Kuliafungwa minyororo Katika nyungu ya wahamori Cho kwa ke mungu Mana yeye anakupenda Iwale mana fadili Iyo ndowe miungu geni Katika maisha yako Umtumikie mungu Kuliafungwa minyororo Katika nyungu ya wahamori Cho kwa ke mungu Mana yeye anakupenda Iwale mana fadili Iyo ndowe miungu geni Katika maisha yako Umtumikie mungu Oh, I- 
Asante uh, sana tuwapigie makofi mazuri as we request them to come back to the floor so that the moderator can pray for them. Asante. Uh, tuwapigie makofi. PCA Mount Olive, Bugoma Parish, Abari Zenu. I visited your place. You did that number that you have just done, and I was impressed. And I requested you to do one now for the team. And you did it. See, in Tokyo, Missouri, you can hear that you see that you have a makosa, Munaeza Iba. Because you took time, it was a very short time when I, when I commissioned you to do the theme song. It was a very short time, but you have been able to bring it out very well. It will go into our records. It's not just being presented here. It is going into our documentation, into our archives. So many people will say, and you also see when you are quite old, utaangalia wone vire uliku. Kwa hivyo, asanteni sana, mchugaji parokia, buwana kibisho, and uh, the presbytery, uh, sugar belt, asanteni kwa kufacilitate, hawa kuja hapa, wame kuja hapa, mnikufika jana. So, thank you very much for what you have done. You have made our GA very colorful. Let us pray. We thank you, our Lord, for your grace upon us. We come before you with thanksgiving because you have what you have granted us. It is indeed you who has taught us to sing in worship. You have given us voices and a language to use to sing to your, to your glory. We have a choir here from Mount Orif, PCA, Bugoma Parish. And they came. They presented to the glory of your name we have also been blessed and entertained. We thank you, Lord, for the voices that you have granted them and even the coordination that we have seen. We want, Lord, to wish them well, present them to you, even now as they prepare to go home, the Lord will walk with them and take care of them through their journey. We know they left homes and loved ones. We pray that those places are safe. And when they go back, there will be no regrets as to why they came. And the messages in their song, May you help us, Lord, to take up those messages, not to just be healers, but do us. Bless the entire presbytery of Shiga Belt. Bless the parish of Bugoma and the good work they are doing there, the minister, the session, and everybody else. As they leave us, we only be away, away from each other physically, but spiritually we remain connected. We therefore speak favor upon each one of them, those used, those who train them, choir master, choir mistress, everybody, and even the resources that they require for their uniform, the resources they require for instruments, God provide. We look forward to more interactions now and even the days ahead. This is a prayer, knowing that they have needs, that Lord you'll meet at each one of them at their point of need. Our prayer, a prayer of faith, in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I now invite uh, St. Andrew's uh, Choir to come and to their presentations. We are still requesting, moderator, that uh, those who are outside uh, kindly uh, can we have some uh, sherries who will whip those people inside. There is a lot of business, moderator, happening outside. So we are requesting everybody to be in the house so that we can continue the business. Please. Let's charge a few to, be, to go and whip them. Uh, Mushangi, get yourself a good whip. And give me an elder who will pay him. Our commander. Commander Bugwa. 
a company level in Mochangi who got a whip, those people who are out there, and uh, still they come in.
thank you uh, to Pigi St. Andrew's Choir and Kofi. Yeah. I had given them two, but uh, they did one, but I didn't want to shout before uh, the exit. Uh, they exit. You had a chance for two. So thank you so much. Moderator, I think uh, this moment you can give to the Honorary Treasurer. We need to know how we are faring. Remember yesterday there was a debate between the President and myself in regard to money. And uh, he reminded me that the church is also ran on money. And that's why I want to invite the Honorary Treasurer to talk about money and uh, whatever he challenges us to do and we mentioned yesterday about 75 percent so let's hear what he says thank you moderator uh, fellow commissioners delegates and, and visitors we do not want to convert this meeting to a finance uh, meeting but yesterday we sent a caution that those presbyteries that have not yet complied with the directive by the business uh, to get to 75 percent we advised them to quietly visit the finance office and and uh, comply uh, we see very high co compliance to the previous regulation of 50 percent but then we have about 20 presbyteries that we require to go and uh, make up uh, before we uh, finally, a uh, uh, request for the moderator to rule on uh, those that are below the 75. So, PCH Ogoria Central, kindly uh, get in touch, that is the treasurer, get in touch with the finance secretariat, they are up here. Uh, PCH Chuka Presbytery, not too bad, but you need to see them. Eldoret Presbytery, kindly get there. We've seen uh, Imenti North, uh, Kajiado. No, Kajiado Presbytery, they complied. Kenny West, uh, kindly see the Finance Secretariat. Uh, Kirimara West, uh, Nyahururu Presbytery, yes, you need to uh, quietly see the Finance Office. Remuru Presbytery, Mukuroine Presbytery, Muranga Presbytery, Nakuru East Presbytery, and, um, Gesha Presbytery, yeah, you need to see the Finance Office, Gong Hills. Uh, Nyandarwa Presbytery, Nyeri Hills Presbytery, Udaya Presbytery, Pwani Kaskazini, Pwani Kati, and uh, Pwani Kaskazini. Yesterday they were all the Pwanis. I've seen some of them. Have uh, finance, uh, bring the matter to a close. The Lord bless you. Therefore, those presbyteries that have existed, the financial offices are there. We will revisit that list. Very soon we will be revisiting it in the course of the day. So go and check why you are listed that way. It, it could be a computer error. <laughs> so check. And they are going to uh, vanish the, the honorary treasurer with the latest. So if your president has been listed, Kaidre, uh, go see the finance team so that when we read the list again, we only need those who have not complied and they take action. Proceed now. The next item is uh, the report of the clerks of assembly. Okay. Moderator sir and the assembly, the reports of the clerk of the assembly are in document three in our dockets. The report of the clerks mainly highlights 
the work of the business committee in the year under review. That is from January to December of 2023. Preamble is that this is a document that highlights the work of the business committee that has carried out in the year under review. The business committee is appointed from the GSE membership to meet when necessary during the year until the next meeting of the GAC. Its life runs from one GA to the next. The membership remains constant throughout the period to maintain continuity beside the ministers who are transferred. The mandate of the business committee is well described in the PNP manual act to be. The members moderator are there outlined uh, from the office together with the past GA moderators and the finance officer. Then Eastern Region members are there noted. Allow me moderator not to read all of them. Mount Kenya Region, the members are there noted in our dockets. Lift Valley Region, also the members are noted there. Nairobi Region, the same. Members are noted there. Central Region, all the members of the Business Committee are noted there. And we have co-opted members, Elder Ngige Njuru, Elder Wangai Maina, Commander Elder John Bugwa, Elder Dr. Grace Murisi, and Elder Elijah Nguyo. The achievements. In the year under review, the Business Committee was able to do the following. The first report moderator is on subdivisions, the Boundary Committee report, because the Business Committee was able to sanction all those uh, subdivisions. Peketoni, um, Nendeni area was upgraded to Lamu Parish. Milimani Parish in Nakuru West was divided into Milimani and Shalom Parishes. Kamete Parish in Ruiro, Presbyter was subdivided into Membley Ridges and Kamete Ridge. Uh, Nairobi Presbyter was subdivided into two presbyteries, Nairobi East, Nairobi South Presbyteries. Uh, and Pwani Presbytery was divided into three, Pwani Kati, Pwani Kaskazini, and Pwani Magaribi. Kisauni Parish in um, Pwani Presbytery was subdivided into two, Kisauni and Bamburi Parishes. Makupa Parish subdivided um, into two, Jomvu and Makupa Parishes. We have St. Margaret Parish in Pwani, subdivided into two, St. Margaret and Milele Parish. Morera Parish in Roiro, subdivided into Morera and Theta Parishes. Roiro East Parish, subdivided into Roiro East and Northland Parishes. Kerwa Parish in Mogoga, subdivided into two, Kerwa and the Manda Parishes. And Kangema Mission Area was handed over to Odaya, a presbytery. These were sanctioned by the business committee. There was the issue of Kamboi land in terms of uh, titling. Um, the business committee took over the issue. I gave it to the, hand, uh, to the office of the Secretary General. By December, the issue was not concluded, but out of, of this year, the issue came to a conclusion when the business um, received the titles and also directed they be given uh, to um, Kamboi. On uh, Family Bank, there was a request to have a liaison person uh, who will work with the bank and the church. It was a rigorous recruitment process where Elder Gerishon Kanori emerged as a successful candidate, um, was uh, presented to the business and the business gave a blessing for him to continue with the work. During the year review, there was a visit to Congo because the business asked some members to go and visit Congo. And the line there were the findings that there is a church in Goma, Congo. Of course, we received yesterday the greetings uh, from the same uh, church. Uh, the committee recommended an engagement. Indeed, um, an MOU was to be drafted uh, so that the same can uh, sign, and the MOU was completed um, in this year, 2024, and one of the churches in Burundi signed, so I believe also in this year the uh, Congo church will sign, but as of December, the um, uh, MOU had not been signed. 
the moderator also in his um, uh, speech yesterday alluded to this that um, uh, the business committee received a request for the moderator to attend um, a national Christmas service that was led by what we would call the NCCK here in Kenya but in Tanzania um, it was the um, uh, coming together of churches uh, the moderator went and uh, according to the report that Her Excellency the President attended and many other dignitaries and uh, Mission Presbyter was very happy that our church father was able to visit there. There's an MOU that was drawn between the church and Kefri. Remember the directive of the president to plant 10 million uh, trees in 10 years and the same was received by the business committee and an MOU was drawn. Um, it was implemented by having uh, different uh, types of planting trees as noted there in Ololua, in Kajiado, Ngaine, in Nyeri, and also Nairobi. And many people were encouraged through the web to every time they plant a tree, the web application, application is just a meeting. So every time you plant a tree, the business recommended that you go there and um, you enter the trees that you've planted. Reintroduction of the chaplaincy was one of the things that the business discussed because uh, chaplains had been trained, they were to be employed by the government. Remember, the Ministry of Education desired to have chaplaincy. The business committee, through the training personnel and development committee, revived the issue and uh, collected biodata. So there is the biodata now. We know all our chaplains where they are, so that in uh, future, that is this year, uh, the business committee can give a direction on how that biodata will be handled. On Alliance High School Chapel, Alliance High School began the construction of a school chapel and they sent a request to this church because we are stakeholders so that um, a contribution can be raised. Every um, founding church, like PC and the others, were located to five million. Uh, towards that. The business committee welcomed the idea and directed that each presbytery give 50,000 where the moderator was given the money to go for ground breaking uh, to represent the whole church. Kibra church construction in the year under review, remember the church was burned because of the political violence in the area and the business committee directed that monies be collected and they be given directly to uh, the presbytery that oversees uh, Kibra so that uh, Kibra could be reconstructed. On PRESPA commissioning, a request by Christian Education, and I believe it will be coming up in their report, requested the business committee for the ownership of our schools to have every principal commissioned uh, because they brought together all the heads of those schools under PRESPA, meaning Presbyterian Schools and Principals Association. The business committee directed that uh, Christian Education develop a liturgy. They develop a liturgy of, com uh, of commissioning and they do that together with, uh, I mean, uh, they look at the directives of the Ministry of Education so that they can be in compliance. I believe that when that is done, it can be brought back uh, to the business committee for sanctioning. Retired Minister's Encyclopedia, there was a request by the retired ministers that they be allowed to collect information, data, so that they can put together an encyclopedia for the church. The prayer was accepted by the business committee and uh, together with the program, they were to go out in the regions so that they can collect data and that is ongoing. The members were Reverend Simon Gidenji, Reverend Dr. Joya, Reverend Dr. Charles Ndanyo, Reverend John Mureshia, Reverend Gladys Moshoki, Reverend James Mbogwa, Reverend James Njue. The business committee also has had a full plate of work which was given into subcommittees. Noted there in the report, you will find there are quite a number of subcommittees that are working on different issues. 
Now, some of the work is still under, uh, ongoing as per December when the report was completed. Number one is the Synod Committee, the committee that is working on the implementation of Synod, uh, the proposal of Synod. It is still work ongoing. Family ethos, to talk about the family issues, the ethics that are there in our families, the report is there attached. On overseas mission presbytery committee, the work is still ongoing. We have the audit committee. The audit committee, by that time of December, the report had not been received. It was work in progress, although during this year 24, uh, they brought the report. Technical committee that was to look at on the construction of Milele um, apartments, the work is still going on. Climate Change Mitigation Committee to advise the business on and the whole entire church on uh, climate change mitigation. The Practice and Procedure um, Committee that, whose work is still ongoing. Now, a bit of a report on the Practice and Procedure Manual. Now, moderator, it's good to note that all these subcommittees present reports. They are quite heavy documents that they present and probably it was not able to include them here as they are still work, go, work, uh, work that is ongoing, but again, they are voluminous in terms of their presentation. But as for the practice and procedure manual review, it came to the attention of the business committee on its mandate to have the practice and procedure manual reviewed and presented, present a draft of the same to the General Assembly 2024. A subcommittee uh, was chosen to oversee this, including Reverend, very Reverend Dr. Julius Mwamba, Reverend William Kagwamba, Reverend Rachel Mbiti, Elder Fred Kaigwa, Elder Elijah Nguyo, Reverend Jennifer Mushemi, Elder Peter Kamwati, Elder Lucy Kalanja, Elder Sarah Ndongo, Elder Ezekiel Karani, Reverend Peter Kinyua, and Elder Wangai Maina. The subcommittee has continuously presented to the business their progress in the year under review, which has been quite heavy and thorough. However, their work is ongoing. Hopefully, that is by December, that they will be done and present a report to this um, assembly. The audit committee was formed and expanded, was to check on the following, check the outstanding receivables from parishes, presbyteries, and uh, committees. It was to check on the mission track on late training that had cost 13.5 million, dormant bank balances, and also check on Milele Luxury Apartments uh, contractor uh, of uh, 23 million in valuation work done. The members thereof were Elder uh, James Njada, who was the chair, Elder Joseph Murigo, Elder Daniel Waithima, honorary treasurer, El Elder Francis Madea, finance officer, Elder Philip Mushiri, Elder David Dumo, a current honorary treasurer, Elder John Wagura, Elder Foreman Kinyua, Elder Mary Mugo, Elder Ruben Kamau, Elder Patrick Waitito, and Reverend Rachel Mbiti. The committee, um, among many other recommendations, uh, we agreed because they presented this report this year. One of the things, of course, the many others have been implemented, but one of the things that it was agreed be presented here uh, was the recommendation uh, to have the following subcommittees uh, to be advising the offices of the Secretary General and the Deputy Secretary General. That is the HR Committee, Procurement Committee, Internal Audit and Risk Committee, Quality Assurance Committee. Moderate on the family ethos, there was a committee that was formed there comprised of uh, Paul Karioki Reverend, Reverend John uh, Shangare, Reverend Simon Murege, uh, Reverend John Gatu, Reverend Peter Karioki Nerito, Reverend uh, Lucy Waweru, Reverend Anthony Merengo, Re Elder Lucy Tamo, Reverend uh, Elizabeth Kimani, and Reverend Henry Kaira. Uh, because of the issues of technology and the change in uh, life 21st century, they were to look at uh, matters regarding um, uh, mental illness, domestic violence, increased drug and substance abuse, homicide, and suicide. And the recommendations are noted there. This is just a highlight. 
um, that the curriculum of the teacher of children be aligned to CBC core values, issues of mentorship be um, engaged in, uh, try and bridge the gap between children and youth ministry, um, that the teaching of catechism should be a process and not an event, uh, crash programs of teaching catechism be done away with. Instead, the church develop a catechism curriculum for progressive teaching. That the youth department uh, will develop a program for preparation of marriage for all adults of the age of 20 to 26. That the youth ministry be clustered together um, to age groups for effectiveness. That the church be deliberate in addressing emerging issues such as sex education, single parenting, that all churches will ensure professional premarital counseling not less than three months. That the church be deliberate to include the following in the training of ministers during um, theological formation in our seminaries, as well as in continuous service, um, sorry, continuous service capacity building, proficiency in pastoral and psychological counseling, including marriage and family therapy, training on emerging trends, children and youth ministries. The TE and Christian Education Department shall develop study materials on parenting to be undertaken by new couples. That church should include long life mentorship. There is through, this is through a deliberate and progressive mentorship program by PCMF and Women's Guild in conjunction with TE, Youth and Christian Education Departments, in which the adults um, shall adopt young boys and girls and mentor them until uh, they reach adulthood. The TE, and Christian Education Department will develop Bible study materials tailor-made to address various issues facing families that other need-based ministries will be supported in the church. These include young parents, fellowship, single, aged, widows and widowers, professional and guild ETC. That the church will be deliberate to establish a support vibrant and structured chaplaincy ministry in all church-owned and church-sponsored schools that the church to embrace the training of all children, of all children ministry stakeholders using a uniformed curriculum. A moderator and the assembly, the business committee also sanctioned a minister's fratano that was held in Arusha, Tanzania from the 1st to 15th May in Lash Hotel where 456 ministers attended and it was successful and the report was given back to the business committee. Also, in the same token, the business committee also uh, sanctioned the spouses fratano that was held in Mombasa Milele Hotel 14th to 18th August and 400 spouses attended. It was successful, the report was given back to the business committee. The business committee also sanctioned new boats for Kairete and medical insurance. In the year under review, the following boats were passed by the business. Kairete, Elder Kenneth Mutura, Elder Beth Mahoe, Elder Junius Getare, Elder Moses Gaduka, Elder Elizabeth Mathenge. Medical Insurance Board, Elder Mary Gadoni Kenyanjui, Elder Joyce Wangare Wagaki, Elder Timothy Karemi Kariba, Elder Stanley Gaidaria, Gadaria, sorry, and five, Dr. Ben Moshiri Ngari. Nominations report. In the year under review, the business committee established a nomination subcommittee to spearhead the process of nominating the officers of the 24th General Assembly as follows. Nominations of the moderator of the 24th General Assembly, the Deputy Secretary General and the Honorary Treasurer took place on the 4th of December in all our presbyteries and the same results were received at the head office um, on the 5th and 6th December 2023. And the business committee met and received the results in a meeting held on the 7th of December 2023 as follows. The names of the nominee that were voted in the position of the 24th General Assembly moderator by the presbyteries was as follows. One, Right Reverend Patrick Dego Mutahi, who got 54 votes. 
Reverend John Borushangari, five votes. Reverend Jason Muresia, Reverend Dr. Esther Njeri Mwaora, and Reverend James Wamboi Karioki, no votes. The sole nominee for the position of the moderator of the 24th General Assembly was identified as Right Reverend Patrick Degumutahi. B, the names of the nominees that were voted into the position of the Deputy Secretary General by the Presbyteries were 1. Reverend John Bae Moraga, 32 votes. Reverend Simon Murege Njaga, 25 votes. Reverend Odifax Mawira, 1 vote. Reverend Elias Totieno Agola, Reverend Dr. Um, John Calvin Kamau, Reverend Miriam Nyambura Njuguna, Reverend Jennifer Njeri Moshemi, Reverend George Kahuhongatia, Reverend Dr. Fred um, Gitonga Kaoge, got no votes. There was one spoiled vote. The sole nominee for the position of the Deputy Secretary General was identified as Reverend John by Moraga. C, the names of the nominees that were voted in the position of the Honorary Treasurer by the Presbyteries were, one, Elder David Nderito, sorry, there's a misspelled, there's Nderito Ndumo, 32 votes. Elder Ruben Gitao Kamau, 21 votes. Elder James Igati Kibushi, one vote. Elder Mary Gadoni Kenyanjui, two votes. Elder Patrick Waitito, one vote. Elder Joseph Munge Giduku, no vote, and there were two spoiled votes. The sole nominee for the position of the Honorary Trasara was identified as Elder David Nderito Ndumo. Conclusion, we thank God for the year under review, though faced with challenges, but has seen the faithfulness of God. Moderator, before I conclude, I wish to seek your permission to have an addition to the same that um, by the going to the print, it was omitted, if allowed. Who is doing the addition? Who is doing the addition? Okay, then proceed. Okay. It will be put on the screen. I beg for your patience. Maybe. An announcement as we wait. Okay. Announcement. Okay. Monitor the monitor's report resolution committee are requested to meet in the spouse's retreat room that is just here. Monitor's resolution committee. Right away. Proceed. Then. Moderator, sir, as that one comes, I would kindly request that uh, the Secretary General, he also has an addition of the same, if allowed, he can do that. Now that you'll be coming to second, you, unless he is going to capture what you are bringing in as an addendum, an addition, because when he seconds, then we will start consuming the report. So you'd rather do your part completely, okay. or he comes and, and do it, plus what else he'll do. Moderator, I see like it's already there. Thank you so much. I can do it. Uh, there's a report on... Uh, yes, there's a report on uh, Bosco Kiru. Uh, during the year under review, of the business committee received the report from Nairobi North Presbytery. 
that Mr. Bosco Kiru, who was formerly a minister within the presbytery, had marital issues which led to their divorce. The presbytery explained that Mr. Kiru was not to blame after looking into the case. Mr. Kiru was given leave of absence to pursue an official divorce, which he did, and the divorce was granted. Thereafter, he resigned as per the practice and procedure, and the presbytery has been shepherding him for reinstatement. The presbytery, therefore, requests for Mr. Kiru's reinstatement by this GA through the business committee. Yes. I now call upon the Secretary General also to bring the addition and also uh, confirm the same. Uh, thank you, Moderator. Before seconding the, the report, uh, in accordance to Article 18.94 uh, uh, and further Article 18. Uh, point 107 that um, a subcommittee can be around to present on the floor of an issue but only with the next place authority from the commission uh, the, the studying committee uh, which it is directly related to so moderator sir we discussed this uh, we agreed as per Article 1894 that we allow the committee uh, which is um, working on the amendment of the Constitution, the practice and procedure, to do a reflection and to uh, present some issues which will be handled um, or changed in the practice and procedure. And therefore, uh, Mr. Moderator, I seek your indulgence to allow the committee to do uh, a short presentation on the PP. Okay, we, uh, that request is made that we allow a subcommittee. The matter has now been introduced. So I guess the Secretary General, you second the report and then we allow that subcommittee to present. Now that you have introduced the matter as to what they want to present about, then we can consume what they will present along with what you have presented. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Moreta, for, uh, for the guidance. And uh, I stand to second the report uh, uh, in document three on the clerks of assemblies report and all the matters contained therein. As we confirm, or as I confirm, it was a busy year and there is a lot which remains uh, uh, to be done and which we are forwarding to the next uh, business committee, the 24th uh, General Assembly Business Committee, so that they can continue with uh, what remains undone. So, moderator, with those remarks, I wish to first second the report as presented. Thank you. We, we, you now can have your subcommittees presenting. I guess there were two. There was one on the encyclopedia. Is there anything to be said in regard to the encyclopedia? You mentioned a team that was working. Yes, moderator, they can also present here. Although so the initial agreement was the moderator was to give them, but uh, I would agree with you, since they have been captured here, they can still uh, present uh, their report here. So, moderator, I agree, the two committees are ready and they can be able to, repair, to, uh, to give their report. Thank you. So, encyclopedia, very briefly, yours doesn't carry much. It's just to introduce what you're doing 
because it is covered in the clerks of the assembly report. Tell us what you are doing and what you expect. Oh, they, they, are, they are in adequate chairs. Okay, very briefly and quickly. Modi Chasa, I take this opportunity to thank you very much for, having been, for being given this opportunity at least to analyze a bit on what has been said here on the issue of PCA encyclopedia. Encyclopedia issue came about when the retired ministers met on 16th February 23, where they met with the secretariat at Milele Hotel in Nairobi. And after being cancelled by the moderator, they decided that uh, they should have a, a committee that will link them and the Secretariat of GA offices. That's the time when the names which have been read here were elected by the region. When that committee met, they thought of doing something, or they asked only one question, what can we do to the church, rather than what the church can do for us? And they decided that though they are retired, they felt not expired. And um, that's when they came with the issue of uh, looking at what the PCA data in the, in the archives, how they are, and if they are correct. When they evaluated all that, they found that the PC, we do not have the uh, full full data for the Presbyterian warfare since, welfare since the inception of, uh, uh, from the missionaries. From 1891 to date, the PCA doesn't know how it, it has grown, how the membership are. Task? What is your task? Quickly, please. My senior. My, uh, thank you, Moderator Sir. Our task was to collect the data from the regions, and the regions were to get these data from the presbyteries, and the presbyteries were to get from the parishes. From there, they would form subcommittees from their uh, respective uh, areas, which would help them. The retired ministers are there to help those who are correcting from the grassroots, especially the ministers who are uh, in the parishes, and they give them what they require, authentic information that would, correct, would help us to have the full data of the, uh, of the Presbyterian Church. This is because we thought, we knew that when the church arrived in, in, in Kibwezi and then in Sogoto and everywhere. I want to cut you short. Yes, Moses, sir. Because uh, we are short of time. Okay. And we just won't understand when you come to us what you expect us to do. Uh, otherwise, the, it is oh, understood. I, the encyclopedia is about information and going into history. I obliged moderator. I will then call my secretary to read the please to the GA. Dr. Daniel, be brief. Uh, Mr. Moderator, sir, it is as such, and therefore we are humbly requesting that uh, this GA really resolves to endorse what uh, was initiated by uh, the business committee and that uh, the, 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 the GA also helps or instructs that the PCA church courts form committees of encyclopedia 
so that those uh, the, the committees in the region, the committees in the presbytery, the committees down even in the parishes will actually get the, 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 the correct data and also come up with a, first, with a draft of a volume of their own region so that finally we shall be able to have an encyclopedia with five or so uh, volumes, each region coming up with a, a volume of the encyclopedia. And for that to happen, we are humbly requesting that uh, the GA instructs the presbytery to form those encyclopedia committees. Certainly, the committee of the retired ministers, uh, the retired ministers will monitor what is happening and we will always front the requirement, uh, the, 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 the progress to the office of the GA. And finally, uh, that in doing that, that the church will facilitate members of the encyclopedia committee at all levels so that the specific encyclopedia volume of the given region is realized. And that the church will ins instruct that the encyclopedia, being one of our church documents, like we are now having the procedure manual that ultimately the encyclopedia will be published uh, by the church uh, to and when that is done we shall be very happy to be able to tell our own story not told by others but our own story and when that is done we shall be able to pass on to that and because we are in constant touch with office if this GRA resolves that uh, we come up with an encyclopedia so that uh, members of this members of PCA and by members we are saying all those who have been baptized in the PCA or attended schools in PCA sponsored schools if they write their own story that will be something that will be very very good and for that to happen we are humbly requesting thank you that that be thank done you. Your, your plea is hard. Thank you. Your plea is hard. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then invite the other. Yeah, moderator, the other committee is the, pra, um, uh, the PP uh, committee, which I'm told they are ready, although I cannot see them. Uh, yes, the PP. The, the practice and procedure manual committee kindly take the floor. Moderator and the Assembly, uh, this is a presentation which is an addendum to document number three um, on the practice and procedure manual review. And I'll request the IT team to please project the PDF document. Uh, it's there, probably you can zoom in perhaps so that we can see. The membership of the committee is as, as was read in the main document three. And uh, this team was constituted uh, by the first GSC of the 23rd General Assembly. Moderator and the Assembly, the subcommittee has made progress on the review process and re received views from the following respondents. Category A, that was presbyteries. 35 presbyteries responded to the letter that was uh, given by the Secretary General seeking their views on the 135 resolutions 
that this General Assembly and its GACs have passed since the year 2004 when we had the 17th General Assembly to date to the 23rd General Assembly 2nd GAC. And also the Presbyteries also responded with their views on new proposed legislation or areas of legislation. So 35 Presbyteries responded. B departments, four departments gave their views. Institutions, two institutions gave their views. And two standing committees gave their views. We wish to thank the Presbyteries and other stakeholders who participated in the process. The subcommittee during the duration of its tenure then identified areas of convergence which we shall uh, display and those areas produced 15 thematic areas for immediate review based on consensus. Namely, one, the first area, was amendments to the Constitution of the Presbyterian Church of East Africa that in our practice and procedure manual is actually the first nine pages of the practice and procedure. The second area that was identified is amendments to the General Assembly that is the age and term of office of the moderator of the General Assembly. The third area was presbyteries, their jurisdiction, composition, and officers. The fourth area was the church and its officers, that is the area of deposition of elders and formation of fraternal organizations. The fifth area was the standing orders, namely the area of virtual meetings and also the area of appointment of members of the nomination sub, the subcommittee. Then the sixth area was miscellaneous amendments relating to sacraments, the chapter on sacraments, the minister and ordained ministry, parish sessions, and the GAC. The seventh area was a Christian marriage, polygamy, and divorce chapter, which basically aligns chapter 15 with the Marriage Act, that is Act Number 4 of 2014. The eighth area was a children's ministry, church school, and boys and girls brigade proposals from the department. The ninth area was a central youth fellowship, and those are proposals from the department. The tenth area is the Presbyterian Church Men's Fellowship, and those are proposals from the department. The eleventh area was a woman's guild, and those are proposals from the department. The 12th area was the Central Finance Committee, and these are proposals from the Standing Committee. The 13th area is the Presbyterian University of East Africa, and these are proposals from the institution. The 14th area is the Presbyterian College Rubate, and these are proposals from the institution. And the 15th area is an Endeni Mission Board, and these are proposals from the Standing Committee. Moderator and the General Assembly, we wish to inform all that not all proposals from the presbyteries made it to the draft uh, proposed legislation for several reasons. The first reason is that some of the proposals failed to gather enough consensus amongst presbyteries. There were proposals that were new and novel, which only one presbytery came up with. And that will require consensus building because the other presbyteries also need to know what others are proposing because the committee felt that would want to have a win-win situation where matters that are coming for um, consideration by this assembly will be matters where there is already consensus. Secondly, the other reason why that, uh, some proposals from presbyteries did not make it is because some of the proposals were really an existing law in the current PNP, and it seemed the proposers were not aware of the existence of the same. The third reason is that some of the views required a bit of understanding and further explanation, which the proposers did not give. In this regard, we are proposing that the business committee and we are proposing to this General Assembly that the Business Committee will have to come up with a consensus building program on certain proposals which are important to the Church, but there are clear divisions or inadequate information 
on the proposals, such as the formation of a synod as a fourth court of the church, then issues of the head office governance structure, whether to have more deputy secretary generals, and the issue of vestments to be worn by ministers at various levels. Moderator and the assembly, the next document is what we call the convergence table. And this convergence table, um, as displayed and may not be very legible, but this is where a number of presbyteries agreed on issues. Because when we received their responses, when we isolated the responses, we found 15 baskets. And those 15 baskets or thematic areas, there are a number of presbyteries that were converging on the same issues. So item number one was the issue of the GA office, the moderator, to be elected once for a one six-year term. There we had 13 presbyteries that agreed. And these are 13 presbyteries that had not talked to each other. But they gave the same view. So that was isolated as an area of convergence. And the presbyteries are indicated there. The second issue was the synod operationalization, whether to wait or to be stopped or to be activated and implemented. 11 presbyteries stated let the operationalization of synods be paused or stopped. So 11 presbyteries without talking to each other came and said this one pause. On the issue of group structure, the groups to reach presbyterial level, and this emanated from a proposed uh, petition by the Dongori Presbytery, which was absorbed as one of the areas that we were to look in. In this area, 19 presbyteries agreed and said the groups should reach the presbyterial level. So that's an area of convergence. The other area that was really looked like it had quite a number of presbyteries talking about is membership for men. They link the church wedding as a requirement for church membership. On that area, 10 presbyteries, even without talking to each other, had given the same view. Then there is the issue of divorce cases for ministers and elders to be granted fairness. There, four presbyteries converged. Then there is the issue of the business member to be elected from the presbytery officials. There, five presbyteries converged on that issue and agreed. The other issue is that the presbytery clerk shall be a minister from amongst the ministers in the presbytery. There, there was a convergence of nine presbyteries who said that should be the position on that item. The eighth area where there appears to be a convergence of presbyteries is that retired ministers in the presbytery, the number to be reduced, and a policy on welfare and engagement of retired ministers is required. There, three presbyteries converged. The other issue is subdivision of parishes. There must be a dedicated building before subdivision, and it should be based on financial viability and availability of personnel. There, two presbyteries converged. On the issue of the minister's months, to have a separate gate, entrance from the sanctuary compound, and where possible on another parcel of land for privacy, there are seven presbyteries converged on the issue. Then, on the issue that a presbytery shall be formed by at least six parishes, there are two presbyteries converged on the issue. The other issue that dissolve parishes that are struggling due to financial unviability, there are two presbyteries converged. Implementation of the right of call, there are four presbyteries converged on the issue. Elders fraternal and ministers and elders fraternal to be established, there are five presbyteries converged on the issue. Then, a line chapter 15, that is the marriage and uh, uh, chapter on marriage, polygamy and divorce, a line chapter 15 to the marriage act number 14 of 2014, there are six presbyteries converged. There for moderator and assembly, those are the areas we saw that we needed to concentrate on first because they were the low-lying fruits 
because this is where there's already some form of consensus amongst presbyteries. And also, we also, uh, as a committee, saw that there are certain matters which are already our traditions. We are already practicing them, but we don't have any code. We don't have any legislation on the same. And we have also included that. And that is why, moderate and assembly, we have 15 thematic areas. Uh, moderator, I would want to know whether there's a time limitation because now I'll go to the legislation itself. Well, I would wish to limit you, but then I realize this is a matter that people need to, to listen to carefully because they were, not, they were not supplied with the document earlier, which should have been the case. Because if it had the document, then it would say they, they have already read. Now they are working with you. So, I don't know. There is a hard there. Is it a point of order? If it's a point of order, I, I would allow. If it isn't a point of order, then we'll proceed. Uh, Elder Kyongo. Give him the mic. They have taken leave. Yes, attempt as they get the mics. Get him the mic. Are they working? Okay, they are. He is there. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. We really want to thank the business committee for that, uh, that initiative that uh, came into the presbyteries and sought those particular guidelines. But uh, I needed some, uh, we needed some clarity that the adjustments that are being discussed here, uh, what we are expecting is that we are going to have a revised, out of that information that they gotten from the presbytery, that they have gotten a draft of those particular changes incorporated into the, into the, uh, in, into the book, into the practice and procedure, with those views as they were be presented so that now when they are, it, will be a, it will have been a document presented back to the presbyters for the Barrier Act. Because if we discuss what uh, other presbyters have been doing in all other works at a time like now, we'll be doing some injustice to the Barrier Act because there will be some influence, some thoughts that will have been shared on the floor here. So my suggestion, Mr. Moderator, sir, is the Business Committee does a, 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 a proposed draft Constitution, which okay. goes to okay. the Okay, Kyongo, Elder Kyongo, I thought you, it was an order. We are not there yet. We are not there yet. We are still consuming what they have, and then we will engage, as you have done. So hold your horses until they are fully done. Then we can invite you. Th thank you, Marita. Well guided. Okay. So I give you a bit more time, not because I would want but because of the weight. Okay. Thank you, moderator and assembly, and we do apologize for the late uh, transmission of the document. However, we shall endeavor to go through it as quickly as possible. And this is because Appendix 4K, which is the Barrier Act, states that before any transmission of proposed legislation to the presbyteries, it must be tabled before the General Assembly for consideration. So that's why we have to put it as proposed and uh, put it in front. So these are the areas, and uh, these areas will now produce what we call the Acts of Assembly, which will amend the Practice and Procedure Manual. So these are the proposed changes via legislative proposals to be considered by the 24th General Assembly to be transmitted to presbyteries via the Barrier Act. Amendment Act number one, which we are proposing, is the Constitution of the Presbyterian Church of East Africa. The clause which we are proposing to amend is clause that is paragraph 1.21, which is on page three. And the proposal is to amend and reward clause 1.21, which is the preamble, which is in the preamble of the Constitution, as follows. This church exercises jurisdiction over all members, elders, ministers, congregations, parishes, presbyteries, regional councils, and synods 
which have so far or hereafter joined its fellowship, together with such institutions and entities formed and owned by the church within the territories of Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, and in all nations where the church is or will hereafter be established. Then, the second part of the constitution that is being amended is Article 10. Article 10, that is section, that is paragraph 1.33 on page 6. Article 10 is amended by renumbering the section from 1.33 to 1.33.1 and adding the following after the full stop. 1.33.2. This church shall, however, not recognize the practice of homosexuality, LGBTQI+, and any and other sexual perversions, as this is contrary to the biblical teaching in the word of God, which is supreme, as emphasized by Article 1 herein. The second area, which is Amendment Act Number 2, on the General Assembly, the clause that is being amended is paragraph 10.31.1. The subject is the age of the moderator. The proposal is to delete the words 50 to 57 years after the word between and replace them with 58 to 59 years. And this stemmed from the proposal from the presbyteries which stated there ahead, which felt that a moderator of the General Assembly should transition to retirement and not to parochial or institutional duties. 10.32, duration of office. Delete the entire clause and replace it as under. Once a moderator general has been elected, he will serve for one term, totaling six years in office. After serving the said term, he shall relinquish the office and a new moderator shall be elected. That again came from the presbyteries on that issue where there was convergence as stated ahead, uh, above. The amendment act number three is on presbyteries and this one uh, is the act, the act of assembly and this is paragraph 3.2 that is section A 3.2 Aya Ikianza kupotea unaintasid Inarudi. Aya, tuendele, imerudi. Okay, that one is Act 3.2, and this one is the minimum number of parishes. This is to delete normally not less than three to read as follows. First, it's a geographic. of at least six parishes. That is section, the next one is section A, 3.7, that is on page 214 of the Practice and Procedure Manual. Delete the clause and replace with one representative of the Presbyterian Church School Committee, two, Presbyterian Youth Committee, three, the Presbyterian Women's Guild, four, Presbyterian Christian Education Committee, five, Presbyterian Mission and Evangelism Committee, making a total of five who shall speak but cannot vote on matters of worship, doctrine, and discipline. That is in accordance to bringing the groups back to Presbyterian level. The representative number is five. Section A 3.8, retired ministers, delete shall not exceed one half and shall read as follows. Retired ministers shall be members of the presbytery, but their number shall not exceed one third of the the serving ministers. for the appointment of an elder as clerk of presbytery in order to retain continuity whenever ministers are transferred. So that one will now be deleted 
as, as proposed. The other clause and section is section A3. Three point twelve, and that is on the issue of the finance chair, and to insert, that is to amend the clause and insert it. That's on page one fourteen. It shall now read this way: Treasurer and finance chairman, A three twelve point one, which has now been renumbered. A presbytery shall elect a treasurer who is somebody who is someone knowledgeable in accounts finances from among its elders to hold office for not more than three years, elections being annual. The new clause being inserted is A3 12.2 Finance Chairman for better management of the business of the, in the presbytery the presbytery shall constitute a presbytery finance committee. The membership shall consist of all parish treasurers from each parish within the presbytery and their ministers and is free to co-opt not more than three other members with financial expertise from its jurisdiction the presbytery shall appoint an elder from amongst its members as a chairman of the finance committee. So then the other item that is being added is to add a new clause 9.1.17 uh, that is on chapter uh, 9 that is on presbytery's duties and responsibilities and the new clause and the new duty of presbyteries is to ensure they are active fraternal organizations for ministers, ministers, spouses, joint ministers and elders. And for elders as provided for in paragraph 12.79 hearing. That's a new paragraph that will be shown uh, as we progress. The fourth amendment act is the church and its officers. And that one is a uh, amending paragraph 12.28 on page 105 is to delete an elder shall be deemed to have resigned when he leaves the parish to reside elsewhere. To read as follows, an elder is free to reside outside the boundaries of the parish and the presbytery as long as he, can, he or she can render pastoral service to his or her district. New um, then close paragraph 12.29 on page 105 that is on 12.29 to add the following and this is the issue of deposition of elders an elder charged at the presbytery by a parish session shall not be deposed by a presbytery without first being heard the presbytery after hearing him or her and considering the charge, may rule to depose him or her or recommend other form of discipline. That see chapter 14 on church discipline measures and chapter 16 uh, on clause 16.3, paragraph 16.3. The other amendment to the church and its officers is fraternal organizations. And this is a new clause, new clauses 12.78 to 12.86. And this is an introduction of fraternal organizations in the code and uh, the practice procedure in our terms of governance, fraternal organizations for ministers, minister spouses, and for elders. The objective of, for fraternal, of fraternal for ministers, minister spouses, and fraternal for elders shall be non-political and shall, be, shall, amongst other objectives, be to promote fellowship and spiritual wellness, build networks, promote unity, and support churches, the church's endeavors. The fraternal are not to discuss the business of the church and elders at the presbytery level is encouraged. Minister spouses fraternal must incorporate a spouse of a retired minister and a spouse of an institutional minister among three. The minister spouses fraternal shall be at the presbytery and national level. Elders fraternal 12.84. 
The membership of an elders fraternal shall be the ordained elders active and retired, including its officials. And, in, and include officials of the elders fraternal must incorporate a retired elder amongst its officials of elders fraternal to be drawn from and the officials, amongst the officials of the elders fraternal to be drawn from its membership. 12.85, the elders fraternal shall be at parish and presbytery level. 12.86, a mixed fraternal of ministers and elders at the presbytery level is encouraged. The fifth area and the fifth act is the amendment of the standing orders. And this is paragraph 18.1. And the reason is to uh, anchor virtual or hybrid meetings. So on page 167, the clause 18.1 will be amended as follows. And our, these orders are drawn for the benefit of ministers, elders, and the general membership in order to ensure smooth running of business in meetings of the church or its organizations. They have been enlarged from the old orders in view of the experience gained over years. Virtual meetings via secure electronic platforms due to emergencies or when physical gatherings <coughs> excuse me, are inaccessible due to health or geographical limitations are encouraged, provided that good governance principles are maintained in the virtual meeting, and this includes transparency, promotion of inclusivity, and participation and adherence to the established procedure. The second amendment to the standing orders is to paragraph 18.2 on page 167, and to add the following words, virtually or combination of both, and it's to read as follows. A meeting shall be held both shall be held physically or virtually or in combination of the two to coordinate activities, to build morale, to share plans, solve problems, exchange information, uh, ex it's supposed to be explore issues, not expire, explore issues, find out new ideas, or inform, confirm old ones. However, in the discretion of the court or committee, they can determine the matter to be physical only. Then the third amendment on studying orders is to, uh, that is uh, paragraph 18.36, that is on page 171 and 172, and this reads this way. The business committee at the meeting held early in November of the year prior to the holding of the General Assembly appoints a subcommittee which includes the current and past moderators to form a nominations committee to ensure participation and unity of the whole church, regional representation, and a free and fair nomination process, the business committee shall appoint two members of the business committee from each region, half being ministers and the other half being elders, to the subcommittee, which shall be chaired by a past moderator. It shall shortlist potential candidates and submit their names to presbyteries. It shall also receive nominations of the post of, of moderator, secretary general, deputy secretary general, treasurer, or any other senior posts. If incumbent officers are potential nominees, they do not take part in the nomination process. The sixth area is miscellaneous amendments, and this comes to Sacraments 3.18.3, that's on page 21, that it reads this way. A child can be baptized if either parent, guardian or sponsor, is a full member of the church or as per session discretion. Then the second portion of that miscellaneous amendment is ministers and the ordained ministry, Chapter 6, clause 6.64, that's on page 47. Clause 6.64 is hereby deleted and replaced with the following. The performance of marriages by ministers of religion in Kenya is at present governed by the provisions of the Marriage Act number no. 4 of 2014. Under the Marriage Act, a Christian marriage may be conducted only by licensed ministers appointed by the Registrar of Marriages and shall be governed by the provisions of Part 3 of the said Act. For detailed procedure under the Act, see Chapter 15, for, uh, for, the, uh, for the avoidance, or rather, yeah, full stop. For the avoidance of doubt, in Kenya and other ter territories are nations where the church is situated. The minister stands guided that marriage is a voluntary union between a man and a woman, and this church shall not recognize the practice of homosexuality, LGBTQI+, and any other sexual perversions, as this is contrary to biblical teaching in the word of God, which is supreme as emphasized by Article 1 of the Constitution of the Presbyterian Church of East Africa. Uh, the area continues with amendments to parish sessions, Clause 8.6. Clause 8.6 on page 62 is hereby amended by adding the following after the full stop on the last line. The moderator of the session is the only one who can be elected in the presbytery to hold office in the presbytery. For context, 
the entire clause also provides where there are more than one minister in a session and this is to now clarify that it is where there is more than one minister in the session it's only the moderator of the session who can be elected to the presbytery amongst the ministers of that session to hold office in the presbytery uh, 11.8 Thank you, moderator and the commissioners. From my observation, moderator, the, the document is on page 9 out of 79 pages. It is taking too long and we cannot digest this and actually remember some of these clauses. My suggestion, moderator, would have been we separate eight from the reports of the principal clerks and then this PDF document be sent to our WhatsApp as commissioners through the presbytery clerks. Then we can take a break of about half an hour, peruse through the document, maybe half an hour earlier this evening, so that we can have time to peruse through it and bring suggestions so, so that we can do justice to the document. Right now we are just sitting down, sometimes not even concentrating, and it is 79 pages. We are at page 9. Okay, well... Uh, Clapping is good, but it doesn't help much. <laughs> so we require, if you think that's the direction, so that, because it's midway, if you think that's the direction, then we could hear one or two you from your side speak. Like he has said, he has made a proposal. I don't know whether it's gaining traction for among us you. Levere uh, Karanja. Thank you, moderator. I want to... Uh, back that with an amendment. The 30 minutes may not be enough to go through that document. It is heavy, it is beautiful, awesome work has gone into it. I was seated here admiring the mind that has gone into that document. So you, with your indulgence moderator, we, I would request that we put the document discussions tomorrow. It is sent today, but we discuss it tomorrow. The business that was supposed to be done tomorrow be brought today. So one of the business be brought today for tomorrow, then we discuss that tomorrow fresh. Because it's about the constitution and it's beautiful, great minds that have taken place there. So I, I second with the amendment that we go tomorrow. Thank you. An amendment? My amendment. All my effort to follow, and I stopped following in the middle, because all these technical languages requires uh, much more reading. It required us to present all these amendments and all these new laws to the next general assembly after all the presbyteries calculations have read and understood. And we have re re reported to the business committee what is to be presented to the next GAC and, and to the next GA. What a matter of amendment of constitution is changing the church. We have, in that very... So what are you proposing? We are changing the structure and the nature and the character of the PCA. That's right. What are you proposing? That to do that, we need one year. <laughs> we, we need... Monitor, it's not a joke because if with my education... Okay. I need that time to understand. What about the elders? Okay, okay, okay. I, I think all you people are reading almost from the same script. What should have been done? And I think I mentioned that. The documents should be have, have been availed. For us to study it so as to engage properly, even as we are being taken through it. Now we are hearing it for the first time. And this is not a small document, as you can see. So it's not something that you, although not everything maybe would require for us to peruse, maybe we could go by the soft, uh, the milder suggestion that it be circulated. You have time to study it between now and tomorrow. And then we come back and make the kind of suggestions that are being made. So let us not make those suggestions prematurely now before we have engaged with the document. 
that you first get the document as was suggested by one commissioner seconded and amended by another you get the document make sure you go through it today tomorrow we still have friday maybe then come back and uh, deal with it so that you know it can't go to the presbyteries before it is consumed by the general assembly so i don't know whether that will work for us yes there's a hard here is that level kabaiko no Moderator, sir, I concur that uh, the document be uh, be given to the members, circulated to the members through uh, uh, online, uh, so that we can be able to consume it and we review it uh, in the days to come. But we can't keep it for a whole year because this process has uh, been ongoing for for several years since a decision was made by the business committee to have. A review. So if we continue uh, postponing the decision, it will be to our detriment since the issues being raised here are very pertinent uh, for, for the church. So what duration, what duration of time should we have between now and when we come back? A day or two, moderator, sir. Friday can be ideal. Okay, so do we get the document and study it for the next one, two days? and then come back and uh, now engage yes. is that good yes. even Levin Moses Dego has agreed to that <laughs> okay give Levin Moses Dego the mic moderator son the assembly I get the mind of what our senior Dr. Joy is saying this document is affecting the life the nature and the character of the Presbyterian Church. In the few hours that we are going to be sitting here to go through that document, we must be honest with ourselves that we might not be able to get to the detail of the document and pass it to the Presbyteries. The issues that have been raised, we engage each other at a very informal meetings, which are not available in this meeting today. And I want to disagree with my namesake, Reverend Kavaiko. There is no hurry in constitutional change. There is no hurry. We can do it even for two years because we want to pass a document to generations. We are not passing it to ourselves. We are passing it to our daughters and our sons. So this hurry of passing a document should be very systematic so that we can engage each other and put a product that will serve generations. So I propose to refuse to take information because I want to rule that we get the document for a day or two then come back and say the kind of things we are saying that we are unable or we are able right now since we are only seeing the document here we don't have it it's not the right time maybe to say we have, we have been unable to read it we have been unable to understand it why don't we give ourselves one day two days come back and say some of the things that we are saying that tumejaribu kusoma imeshidikana au tumesoma tumeerewa lekebisha hapa lekebisha hapa sivi nasikia watu wakisema hapo diko sawa Yes. So, <laughs> okay, that's the route. So, uh, this, uh, you know, share the document in all ways that you can. Let these all commissioners have it. Tomorrow, you read it. And on Friday, we make time for it. Yes, we are done. We are done. Okay, so that one will not be debated. We can't have a resolution now. We can only have a resolution then. Okay, we now have to go to the questions on the matters that are here. Questions now. I invite questions. Questions in regard to the entire report. Not necessary. Don't revisit that issue unless it's a question that you think will help. Questions. Levin Mulege.
Thank you, moderator. In the resolutions of uh, the clerks of the assembly, document 3.3 on the boundary committee, there is one glaring uh, issue that is missing on the formation of the Lower Eastern Presbytery that if we can jog our minds in the last General Assembly, there was a resolution to fast track the formation of Lower Eastern <coughs> Presbytery. And uh, we have heard nothing about it, and I've been a member of business, and uh, we discussed the late matter, and it was very strong. But uh, eventually we had a way out to form that presbytery. I expected to hear that information, and it's missing. Thank you, sir. Okay, questions uh, from, uh, let me first exhaust this Said. Uh, at the back there, there is a hard, Dr. Wajau. Sir, in regard to the constitutional review, the sources of the data we missed something to do with the resolution of the General Assembly. Because the resolution you know, keeps the tradition and the practice that has been there and it will need to be reviewed and also. Uh, a roost in order to aid the, the amendment of the constitution. So note, that is the question. Okay. note to the questions. We are on this law, Dr. Kalemi and Elder here. Thank you, moderator. Um, in the reports of the, the report of the club, I note with concern that uh, there are actionable steps. Uh, pertaining to the church in Congo. But moderator have been in, the, in uh, several other GAs, three actually, that have made resolutions about the diaspora pres presbytery. And we always say that where there is a will, there is a way. I have been in the diaspora, I know what it means. We are now pushing to have some plan, actionable steps on Congo Yet we have our very own outside there, but we are not implementing that. Monitor would expect from the reports of the cracks that we should have an actionable plan on the same, so that we don't... Question? We, we, Your question? Thank you, Monitor. I just wanted to know, do we have any actionable plan about implementation of Oasis Presbytery? Thank you. Uh, there's an elder here. Uh, uh, Ah, I thought it was an elder. Thank you, Moderator. Uh, on Boundary Committee is a collection of dates. Kagema to Odaya Presbytery, it is not June 2024 as noted. Mm -hmm. It is 2023. That's a collection, a good one. We are here now. Level Joroge, then uh, Level Kahuva coming this way. Nitawapata tu nyote. nyote. Network in Ashika. Thank you, Moderator and the GA, to the uh, practicing PP Review Manual Committee. Do they believe that the raw data that they received from very few presbyteries is generalizable and enough for recommendation for uh, legislative changes? Because some of the, uh, the recommendations come from just two presbyteries or three presbyteries. Is it generalizable or they would have given time, clustered at the thematic level, and then sent to the presidency for second rule data that would help us now come to the legislative recommendations? Quickly, Reverend Kabuva. Thank you, moderator, sir. The, my question is, before I joined the ministry and before all of us, those that are in front there joined the ministry, the issue of synod has been coming in. And many, many, many GSEs have said and resolved that we do it without much. So I ask, has General Assembly have power to 
ask why the delay is that this thing has been in process and even in today's document it is still in process how long will it it has taken 35 years Synod. to be the process Synod. thank you Every thank you, thank you moderator sir mine are two questions on the same document regarding one the encyclopedia committee since its inception or when it was uh, 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 given mandate to move on what are the terms in uh, with regard to funding because they have already gone out and they are doing their work and number two for how long are they going to be in the field that need also to be considered they need to tell us number two, uh, the second question uh, from the family ethos when that committee was working looking at the areas that we have problems did they assess the ministers? Were they able also to interrogate the ministers to know how far they do their counselling? How long do they work with the people they need to counsel? Thank you. Have Dr. Joya. Thank you, Modern. Mine is a very fundamental question of Article 1. Many of that constitutional amendments and additions, they have not they have forgotten that article one and two and three cannot be amended by any general assembly because they define what the word pca means so i think they should revisit them and i'm very very serious on that because it's a fundamental issue that you cannot amend article one two three even if you are the general assembly and there are some effects like for instance i would want to say the question yeah why have you redefined the ministry while Article 1 and what forms the PCA, the ordained ministers, does not redefine into categories of retired and non-retired. Why have you categorized this? Again, why are you... The definition of the ministry, I would like you to put it there, is we are, a, a ministers, are a, of, um, we are ministers of word and sacrament. That's why I'm saying there should not be discrimination. And we are the other one that you reiterate this we are apostolic succession and historic succession if you discriminate you are removing one category of ministers who have seen wearing chorus like mine from being part of the apostolic succession which is actually a fundamental Dr. Joya, you are giving a lecture. Or the form. Okay. You are not asking a question. I am used to that, but more than that, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm, I'm saying, I want to know why they have not considered the historic doctrines of the PCA, what defines a minister of word and sacrament in the defining between non-retired and retired medals. The other thing I would like to say, ask, have they, in their research on uh, document for uh, recommendations four to five have they consulted presbyteries about the catechism are they because the pres uh, the presbytery of Rogiri has already in the last two years made a new catechism for teaching and the, uh, I, I think they should consult it and, or if not consult it use it instead of writing another one and they, if, if you read number four five and six why are they not consulting the press ministries? Uh, I... Order on questions. Hey. Order on a question. Okay. Moderator. Thank you, sir. We are sit, studying. Please. Can Dr. Joya sit? <laughs> Moderator, that issue that is being discussed by uh, the uh, referee Dr. Joya and others have raised it on the review of the constitution. I think we had an order from the chair, from you moderator sir, that we don't discuss that issue. Instead, the committee sends that report to us so that we can read and so that when we come here tomorrow or the day after, we can respond. So we are not, we, we, we should not discuss it here.
because there, was a, there is an order from the chair of the moderator that we don't discuss it here. Let the committee give us the report, we peruse, and then we will know the way forward tomorrow or thereafter. Thank you. You had heard me properly. Uh, we are moving this way now. Yes, and uh, since the order has overtaken what you are saying, you cannot start again. Thank you, moderator, for giving me the chance. I want uh, to inquire uh, from the crux report. I've said about the forming of the HR committee. And I remember some time in two previous GSEs at the General Assembly, there was a resolution on a HR manager or, or open, uh, create an office of HR to deal with office matters or personnel matters. And also this issue of Shaprina said that is keeping on coming, whether we can operationalize the office of the secretary for training and personnel development because moderator we are overloading the office of the dsg we need now question uh, the, 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 my question is whether we can operationalize the office of secretary for training and human resource manager we are here dr Kar uh, karanja thank you questions one on kibra the reconstruction of uh, Kibra Church, how much money was raised, how much was expected, uh, because Kibra Church still needs those funds to be followed on. Question two, on the fraternals of the ministers and the rest, we have had enough complaints from our parishes because those letters on fraternals always come when already we have done our budget. Can we be able to be raising those letters earlier? So before, as we go to plan for the budgets, question three, on the liturgy. Can the committee, instead of just looking into the liturgy for schools, expand and look into amendment of the liturgy, because especially we have need retirement of elders liturgy, which is happening every day and we do not have one, though in Kiambu Project we had done one, and then also liturgy on, besides dedication of houses, dedication of even sports facilities, because we have now been borrowing from other denominations when it comes, when you have a, a function and you want to do, we've now been borrowing liturgies from elsewhere. Thank you, Morita. Okay, commissioners, you realize we are learning short of time, and I would, pre, I would want to allow as many as possible. So kindly, when you get the mic, get to the question very fast so that we allow as many as possible Reverend Nancy and uh, the elder before uh, ahead of you will be next uh, okay thank you moderator from the report of the, the the principles of the general assembly I captured the issue of the issuance of uh, PCA Kaboy Presbytery titles and uh, there we, we still have mission areas or mission lands whose titles cannot be traced in the Presbyterian Foundation. So my question is, what will happen if the titles have disappeared? Pass the mic ahead of you. Ahead of you. Just your neighbor there. Ah. Thank you, Monroita and the GA members. Uh, my question is on the report from the clerks. They indicated on the achievements that they made last GA. My concern is that there was an omission I noted. Last year, there was a merging of two parishes. That was Mitungo Parish and uh, Mutokema Parish. They were merged to be a parish called Kirendene Parish. The presidential members attended the, the function, and the function was uh, presided over by the GA moderator of the Tendan General Assembly. But it was not mentioned there. I don't know whether it will be categorized in the area of achievement or whether it was a challenge. Thank you. Reverend Jennifer. 
Thank you, moderator. I want to be brief and ask about the chaplains. And since a few names had come to the business, I didn't hear how soon are we going to ordain the chaplains, the tent makers who are already working in other institutions so that they can be able to start their work. And I think time is live for us to have a personnel in the training and personal development so we can... I defer that. Defi that question to training. Please keep okay. it okay. until it is time for training. All right. Then we are here, Reverend Kariuki, Reverend Moses. Uh, some gentleman there I will need to see properly. Thank you, moderator. Sir, I think Jama. under family ethos, recommendations on finding an overlap of the age, age group for the youth. Are we changing the youth age bracket, which is 15 to 35? I see we are domiciling it to Christian, to children ministry. Number two, how is the progress as far as the single congregation? management structure is concerned, single congregation parish, we are suffering. Moderator and the Assembly, uh, I just want to ask one fundamental question that is I'm struggling with on the issue of what the monitor you raised in your report, given that the clerks to the assembly uh, need to be a, a, in agreement with whatever is happening. I have read your report on the establishment of these committees. And it seems that maybe the monitor, sir, whatever I'm reading from your document and what I'm reading from the clerks, it is not reading from the same page and uh, it's because you have suggested that the committees of HR, procurement, internal auditor, and risk management and quality assurance be established within the business committee to be advising the business committee. And here the principal clerks have taken the committees and said they should be uh, committees that should be advising the Secretary General and the Deputy Secretary General. My question is, how do these committees advise, we manage the advice, how do we manage advices in the PCA? How do we manage the advice? So if you cannot manage the advice, they should advise the business committee so that the decisions of HR, procurement and others can be implemented by the business committee. So moderator from your report, I think there was a difference. So that I'm, I'm trying to engage my mind to know who is right. Is it the moderator who is right or is okay. it the principal clerks who are right? Something is wrong there. Uh, let me, is it Jomo? Moderator sir. Moderator sir and uh, the commissioners. When you talk about chaplaincy, I, I just want to ask a question regarding chaplaincy. Sometimes this is a work that we love so much that it, it becomes like uh, chaplaincy personified. But uh, the question I have to the report of the cracks of the assembly is that they have talked about the reintroduction of chaplaincy. Is, that, is it an admission that it has been a more bad program that has not been uh, given, uh, the, they are giving it a new impetus, that is one. Two, because the government is dithering about this, of which you know how it has been mashed out it, that the president has got a presidential working party, which was actually to dedicate the document of chaplaincy, does it mean now that PCA church is not going to progress with that very line, just because the government is developing code fit? Because I would believe it is because they came to understand that they cannot implement the document because they did not factor in the place of call and audit the, the ordination because teachers cannot be uh, ordained, uh, they are not ordained, they are not to carry out the ordinances and I think the, 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 the team should explain to us what measures are they taking to mitigate that issue because we are going to suffer uh, uh, in, in as much as we talk about the chaplain. Thank you. Uh, 
Moderator, sir, um, I'm asking whether the lacuna that was established or found yesterday in the morning in the PNP can be considered by the review committee about the installation of the honorary treasurer. Okay, looks like there's no hand on that side. At the very edge over there, my eyesight fails me. I see it's a minister. Um, okay, you just stand up. Identify yourself. Uh, thank you, moderator. My name is Joseph Mwagi Mushemi. Oh, okay, go ahead. Yes, uh, my question is about uh, what was reported on um, our church stand on homosexuality because uh, we have had enough now. People have talked too much and they have blamed us, ministers and elders, about that. Is there a document uh, that can help us, you know, as we teach against that? Is there a document that we can get so that as we teach or direct our youth or whoever can be rightly directed? Thank you. Moderator. Answers. Answers. Moderator and the Assembly, thank you so much for the questions, good questions, and uh, we'll distribute them amongst us, uh, those that touch on the encyclopedia, the will, and on the PNP, the will. One on the issue of boundary, Moderator wish to tend an apology that indeed um, we skipped um, in our report the issue of the Lower Eastern Presbytery uh, that came out all the way uh, from the GSC in April um, on which uh, before the GSC in March we discussed the issue and therefore moderator that is an omission which I would wish on the floor of the General Assembly to apologize that should have been there that the matter was told that uh, they need to be grown they need to be grown before they are sanctioned as a, a presbytery, Lower Eastern Presbytery. I do apologize for that. On the issue of Congo, uh, diaspora presbytery, there's an issue that has been in discussion. Actually, the conclusion is this year, 2024, and therefore it could not have come in the report of 2023. This will feature in this year's report at the end of the year. That's why we couldn't capture it, because the last business just a few months ago, that is when they gave guideline, and therefore this report, this report is supposed to come in the next uh, GSC. Thank you for the correction of 2024, not 2023. On the issue of say notes, I will leave for the, and the encyclopedia for them to um, to mention also the article one of the PNP. Why not operationalize the issue of HR? These are two different things that the audit committee is the one that came up with that recommendation and that recommendation was sanctioned by the business. And uh, in the last business also, a resolution was passed by, uh, directed by the um, the um, uh, business committee that we wait for the 24th General Assembly uh, so that when these committees are put in place, issues like the HR manager and uh, all the other necessary um, uh, positions will be filled after this and therefore operationalization will come when if this General Assembly is going to pass these committees. Kibra money that was raised uh, by um, this is 22nd, um, this is June 2023, a total of 5,424,501. And I said that this was raised through the presbyteries. And therefore, 
I believe even the members of the business who are here know that we have been requiring uh, accounting from the presbytery because the money was sent directly to the presbytery and not through the head office, but we get that update. On the issue of Fratano, let us to be raised early. I take that as a direction forward, and therefore the next committee that is going to plan for the Fratano, uh, I believe that they will take that positively so that the next one will not have letters coming late. On the issue of liturgies that have been mentioned, the Training and Personnel Development Committee has been given a mandate by the business to come up with all those liturgies. Therefore, it is work in progress, not just this for the schools, but quite a number of liturgies that the Training, Personnel and Development Committee, and it has raised up a committee to look not only at the new liturgies, but even to look at our liturgies right now that we are using, so that if there is need to edit and upgrade, and it can present to the business committee. I will leave the, uh, leave the issue of titles, Kambui title and mission titles to the SG. But also the issue of Metongo and Motokema merging. I do wish also to apologize as an omission. Happened in February, it came up in the GAC. Uh, maybe that is why I didn't put it here because it was reported in the GAC. However, I do apologize for not putting it here in the clerk's report. Family ethos on the single congregation, I will leave that to the PNP because it's part of what was being presented by the PNP um, committee. Issue of disparity where a commission has raised that the moderator has said that in his report that those committees were to advise the business committee. This was the moderator's report. But the business report, remember we are taking minutes from the business, the minutes of the business, and this was a recommendation of the audit committee, which was received by the business, passed by a minute, it reads very clearly that these committees were to advise the office of the DSG and the office of the Secretary General. On chaplaincy, do we wait for the government? No. Remember? that uh, we had cha trained chaplaincy because the government wanted the chaplains, but unfortunately it delayed. We are working close with the national chaplaincy uh, of Kenya. Uh, one of us, uh, Reverend Gatu, is the chair, so that we can see how we can best develop the need-based training. But for those already who we had trained, those who are the ones we were taking data, so that uh, should need arise, we see when uh, we need them. However, this is an issue that also is ongoing with the Training uh, Personnel Development Committee. I will leave the rest uh, to my colleagues here. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Moderator, sir, a question has been asked about uh, the funding of the encyclopedia. This being a, a grad project and uh, presented to the business and now endorsed by this General Assembly, our plea uh, was that uh, the church facilitates members of the Encyclopedia Committee at all levels. So if it is a committee of the Presbytery, we hope that the Presbytery will find out using uh, competent people who have academic and professional abilities to do the work, that the same will be uh, supported by the presbytery because, or the, or, uh, because they are actually making uh, a document of that presbytery. If it is this another region, we, we are asking the church at those levels to facilitate those who are working and hope that when the data and the work is done, at least for the first year, by the end of the first year, uh, in our next uh, GAC, uh, I mean our next GAC, progress report will have been made because the project is ongoing and it is the hope of the entire, uh, of the encyclopedia committee that uh, the work would be completed by the time of this, the life of this assembly. 
That is the much I will be able to say, and this is why it is only a plea that the church facilitates at whatever levels. Thank you, uh, moderator and the assembly. Um, the uh, questions on the, the constitution review, whether the resolutions of the GA need to be reviewed. Yes, this needs to be done. And actually, we, through the SG, um, 135 resolutions were sent to the presbyteries. That is from the 17th to the 23rd General Assembly. And actually, presbyteries gave their views and um, 35 presbyteries actually gave their views on those 135 resolutions, some which are, um, and they elaborated in there saying what needs to be done. And uh, also in that light, also that one of the resolutions that was sent, which came out very clearly, is the issue of synod. And um, from what we have seen, and from the records that are with the Secretariat, is that on the issue of synod, I believe there is a feedback that the presbyteries gave, and I think that was in the 19th General Assembly, or uh, uh, its GAC, where the presbyteries actually gave response, overwhelmingly responded, do not implement. And those records are there, and in that particular file. So that issue, it is yes, is an act of assembly, but it is on hold. It's not yet been implemented. And in fact, there is correspondence of the then Secretary General asking the presbyteries to implement, but the response came back, do not. So that, that is an issue that needs to be looked at, and that's why one of the resolutions we are asking the Assembly is to allow the review committee uh, that will be set up by the business committee to go down and understand from the presbyteries what the issues are, so that if there are any concerns or fears, those are addressed. That is basically um, what you're saying, civic education on, on what basically what is required of uh, the Synod and also some of the resolutions which are also under review. The issue of diaspora, um, and the former DSG has uh, responded on that issue. Um, that's a 2024 matter where the applications have come in and those are still under process. Um, on raw data, uh, whether the the data we have received is, generalize, is generalizable. Um, what we say is that 35 presbyteries gave their response. Uh, the period of time that had been given for response um, has been extended over time to six months. Um, we would want to also understand why the, the 24 other presbyteries did not respond. And uh, that also requires us to go down. But also one of the key things, when we come back after two days, you'll see that one of our uh, resolutions which we are seeking is that we allow the other presbyteries also to respond. But what does that mean? It, does, it does, should not stop this other process of the Barry Act because we are actually the fourth committee. This is the 20th year. Um, this review was a resolution of the 17th General Assembly. We are still here. We have not moved. And therefore, there, there needs to be a closure because even in those 20 years, some of the things that the 17th General Assembly has stated to be reviewed have now become stale. So that is now where we need to move. So one of the key things that we'll be asking is that the 24th General Assembly do allow further uh, of review, uh, um, views from presbyteries. Um, Article 1, 2, and 3 have not been amended. Um, what we are proposing to amend is the preamble, the preamble which talks about the jurisdiction of this church, so as to open it so that now we can now be, have the sixth region of the church, which is the diaspora, and open the church to actually have uh, investments outside East Africa. And so we, have, we are proposing an amendment to the preamble, and we are also proposing an amendment to Article 10, which talks about equality. Um, with a rider that the issue of LGBTQI, that one, we are saying that there's a caveat to that. Um, so um, Article 10 and the preamble are the only areas we are amending. We have not touched the fundamental doctrines, Article 1, 2, and 3. That one we cannot touch. 
Um, and then the issue of categorization of ministers. Actually, th this stems from matters which are already in practice um, because you have in the composition of uh, presbyteries, there is the requirement for retired ministers to attend. So it is something that is already there in the PNP, the categorization. And also, again, this, uh, uh, I think I can't really recall, I think, I think it's the 13th General Assembly had also requested that there be a policy on the welfare of retired ministers and retired elders. So the categorization is basically for the welfare of the retired ministers, not to the detriment. So that is where um, it comes in. Um, the, the document from Rungere, that one, I think it should be the theological panel. We have not received it under the practice and procedure review. That one has not come. What we received from Rungere was purely on the issues which were emanating from the 135 resolutions and any new area, but we did not receive any other issue. Um, and I think that one on the issue of uh, um, catechism, that one should go to the theological panel. Um, single congregation, parish. This is one of the issues that was raised by only one presbytery. Only one presbytery. So it did not form a consensus. But that's why we are saying that we need to go down to the ground because if this is an issue that is emerging, then definitely we would not come together as the presbyteries to see what proposals the presbyteries can give in terms of governance of a single congregation parish so that now we can insert that in the governance manual to have a clear guideline on the governance of single congregation parishes. Um, and also, of course, that also follows the issue of the installation of the HD liturgy. That one, of course, that one can also be included. Thank you, moderator. Uh, thank you. I have been assigned about uh, four questions. Uh, one is that word on the issue of diaspora. Yes, we need to say that uh, the committee has really worked and it has developed uh, a form uh, which has been approved by the business committee uh, so that the same uh, can be signed by uh, any congregation uh, which wishes to join us. But the technical uh, part of it, which is being handled by this uh, practice and procedure committee, is that um, in our current constitution, we cannot have an overseas presbytery. We can only have an overseas mission. So once we are able to rectify that, we will be able now to implement and have an overseas uh, presbytery. But the constitution, as it is right now, it doesn't envisage a situation where we can have an overseas presbytery. But an overseas mission is around. And I wish uh, to say that uh, it is the same for, um, uh, uh, kind of a form or a letter and we have the Church of Brood here, uh, whom we have signed and we signed a memorandum of understanding. But since it was done some few weeks ago, it didn't feature on this because it will feature in the next uh, uh, cracks report. So that work is going on and going on well. For the synods, I think it, uh, I was told to answer, but it has been every answered. Only to remind that committee before this floor, they return my file. They know what I mean. They return my file because there was a thorough, very thorough uh, um, uh, research which was done by the 22nd uh, General Assembly, and that is the file uh, which they got from my office and it informed them of several matters so kindly. Uh, chair of the committee, I, I, I heard you mention about a certain file. Get me back my file. So, and Kagwaba, so kindly get me back my file. The other issue is um, 
uh, Kaboira titles. The Kaboira titles is not whatsoever related to uh, the Ra titles in mission areas. The Kaboira title, which has been a very volatile matter, was an issue which came from DCI. It rated in my office about a land uh, which they purchased, and then the land was getting lost. And uh, when they had a push and pull, and they took each other to, uh, to the DCI, the matter, the DCI wrote to my office, and that's how we came to realize how weighty the matter was. And we followed up the matter through the authority of the business, and it was a very murky, very murky road. And eventually, we were able to get the titles, and now the Kaboi, they have the titles. So it is good for us uh, to mention that. So for those, um, uh, and I'm sure those in the um, foundation, they are going to report about this. Uh, I'm sure, and there is a problem, let me just say this, even before the Secretary Foundation and the Chair report, because people are keeping titles uh, in, their, uh, in their presbyteries. And therefore it is becoming a challenge. Right now, we are uh, implementing and di digitalizing our land registry here at the head office and therefore all the titles remember you are supposed to uh, to uh, to keep a copy and then you bring the original at the head office because it belongs to the foundation if there are challenges uh, with titles and you're supposed to have a register uh, which you are going to fast track and to know how it is kindly uh, let us know so that with the uh, legal officer, who is the secretary to the foundation, uh, the same can be fast-tracked and uh, we know where the matter is. Yes, I was also to answer on the establishment of committees, and yes, I confirm that the uh, minute of the business talks about advisory. And actually, I also need to reflect on the Constitution because what informs this church is the Constitution. The Constitution says the business committee does not have um, uh, what powers. It, it does not have executive powers. And it is, exists the Secretary General. That is our Constitution. Two, the business committee cannot and does not have any powers to deal with the staff. It cannot. So kindly, we need to understand our constitution so that we align ourselves with the constitution and the business had given very clear uh, guidelines on that. They, they are there so that they help, uh, so that we, 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 are, we are advised properly so that we don't just do things. And we agree because we've been saying that our offices are loaded. And that is one of the reasons we are talking about the HR, uh, talking about uh, having more deputies, so that at least uh, we can have some of our work overloaded from us because it is quite weighty. And at times, one does not have a breather so that is why we are requesting this committee to uh, uh, the PP uh, to also ensure that some of these issues are captured well uh, so that uh, we are able to effectively uh, serve the church. Rita J of the HT, I want to confirm that it is there and uh, what happened and uh, the moderator was quite diplomatic is that uh, yesterday before the installation of the HT we received a court order restraining me from conducting it and that is why the moderator continued with the process but um, there was no one 
uh, there was no business which sat so that we could uh, say in the circumstances this is what we can do. So the moderator said, I'll take it up and I'm ready for the consequences and with the wisdom, including of our past moderators, we agreed. And that is how I recused myself and the moderator continued with the ceremony. That is why the moderator said, I'm trying to be creative and innovative. So the liturgy is there and it has been traditionally been used in this church. So uh, there is no lacuna as far as that, that liturgy is concerned. Information. Moderator Sir, it is unfortunate. I will say this without fear of contradiction. It is unfortunate that the Secretary General can lie to the Assembly. So you change the word to be serious. Okay. I, it is unfortunate that he can give information that it is him who had the orders not to induct the HG. The orders are for him and the moderator of the General Assembly. So you cannot take away the orders that it is you who was told by the court not to do. The orders are clear and I have them. The moderator is there and joined with you. You should have said clearly that the orders were given for you and the moderator of the general assembly not to induct. So it is not you as a person. It is you and the moderator of the general assembly who are joined in the court case. So it is unfair to put yourself away and say the moderator went through it because he is not party to the case. He is party to the case together with you. That is a clear information. And the church, the whole of the church, is in a, in a court, you included, and the moderator of the General Assembly. That's the truth, that's the fact from the injunction. I want to rule on that matter. It should not be debated anymore. Okay. A great moderator. Those were the questions, and I reserve my reply. Okay. Let done with the questions they may not be adequately answered because we are constrained with the time if you note we are now beyond 2 p.m. and uh, their comments have not been made resolutions have not been led we are here to take lunch this report was to be presented yesterday there are more reports for today so we could have a long evening so please if we could avoid taking too much time now on the report maybe get into the resolutions that would be fine comments our, our, our two our, our two here. Thank you, moderator. Go ahead, go ahead, Level Mudogo, wait. Thank you, moderator. I have a comment on the Encyclopedia Committee. I have not understood whose committee they are and they are voting to. Because I didn't hear of a business committee that uh, a minute that created them or in the court. And what they are asking, I think they cannot be given. Because they had asked earlier that they are recognized as a subcommittee of the business committee. Let us wait whether, to hear whether there is a resolution. Okay. Thank you, uh, moderator and the uh, commissioners. My comment is uh, on something that uh, the Secretary General said, especially about the committees, the subcommittees that were formed to advise. And uh, when he was replying, uh, he talked about the business committee not having executive powers and uh, I uh, what, what uh, led me to kind of uh, comment on that is if the business committee does not have executive powers uh, who has those executive powers I'm saying this because uh, 
It's good to read the constitution, uh, the letter and the spirit of the constitution. Uh, the, our church is uh, kind of, uh, uh, what, what the church does is that uh, it, is, it has what you call inclusivity. And uh, again, even going back to where we are at the presbytery and even the sessions, there is no one person who makes the decision for this church. It is through consensus, and there are ways how you can make decision in this church. And I believe then that uh, because it is the General Assembly that has those executive powers, the business committee is a committee of the, of the General Assembly. And then it is the one that is supposed uh, to uh, have those executive powers when the General Assembly is not sitting. My comment, moderator. Okay, let's take them as comments. Let's be careful in all our utterances that we make in the House. Note that uh, these matters, are we live? Yes, so let's be responsible in the utterances we make in the House in regard to PCA, in regard to matters. We should be careful, let's be responsible. That's my advice to the House. As much as possible, much as we have our sentiments and emotions, let us as much as possible be careful of what we say here. Like we are pointing fingers at one another. It doesn't help the church out there. It doesn't help the public. When I, when I stand here and figure, figure point at the Secretary General, it doesn't help the church. It doesn't help the church at all. So let's be responsible. We are leaders. We know what to say where, at what time. Let's not try to win scores because it will not help the church and the people are watching they are listening they will take up these matters and spread them all over so on so this was said this was said let's be responsible leaders so that we do not fan and fuel matters out there there is much i can say but i don't say even jesus christ knew the second coming but he said he didn't So there are many things we can say, but we shouldn't say them. Because when we say them, we hurt the unity of the church. We hurt the members who are out there who we should feed on milk and not on hard food. So please, I beseech you, let's not use this forum as a forum where we want, I want to, to score. That, you know, I'm smarter than so and so, I'm better than so and so. If that be the case, then we can come over that side and have a better exchange which will not help at all please i beseech you now let's get to the resolutions resolutions in your document resolutions one this ga receives the report of the clerks of the assembly with thanks two this GA appreciates the great work done by the business committee during the three years the business has been in session. Further, this GA recognizes the sacrificial commitment and contribution of the business committee members, noting that their term is ending this GA. Taken. Three, this GA receives the partnership of Kefri geared towards the planting of 10 million trees. Father, this GA recommends that the members and institutions work towards achieving the goal. Taken. Yes. Four, this GA recommends the establishment of HR committee, procurement committee, internal audit and risk management committee, and quality committee to be advising the Secretary General and the Deputy Secretary General offices. Taken. I'm added. No. Where is the level of the only?
Thank you, Moderator. As follows. Committee to establish procurement committee, internal audit, procurement management, and quality assurance to be reporting to the business committee. Amended. Is that taken? Yes. Is that taken? Yes. Okay. Amended as such. Next. Amended as such. That is taken. Thank you. Five. Get a seconder, get a seconder, uh, you get a seconder to your amendment as we go on, as we go on. Five, this GA notes with concern that individuals and families are living under intense pressure and stress due to the 21st century changes, social dis uh, dislocations, and unprecedented cultural shifts. To remedy this, this GA mandates church groups and ministries to develop a continuous mentorship program for all ages and social categories addressing issues of discipline, mental health, technology, sorry, discipleship, I'm sorry, issues of discipleship, mental health, technology, as well as age-specific sex education from Christian perspective. Taken. Six. This GA appreciates the work done by the Deputy Clerk of the Assembly, Reverend Paul M. Karioki, and wishes him well in his future endeavors. Taken. Amendment. Oh. <laughs> Let's hear the amendment, Reverend Doria. This as uh, this GA appreciates the work done by the Deputy Clerk of the Assembly and the Honorary Treasurer of the Assembly, Leverett Paul Karyuki and Elder Daniel Kiviri respectively, and wishes them well in their future endeavors. That's okay, because he was also a member of the Business Committee. Uh, uh, Elder Waidima was also a member. Or isn't that in order? It's in order, moderator, but there is a finance committee where the clerks will not feature. But he was a member of the business committee, so he will not be coming back. So I guess it won't harm, even if it is said by the finance committee again, as the appointments should also bid you farewell. And uh, here on the board, all where you have worked, I think it's in order. Okay. Let's go on. It's taken. Moderate agreed. Yeah, okay. Number seven. This GA week welcomes the new deputy clerk of the assembly, Reverend John M. Moraga, and wishes him God's blessing in his new role. Would Reverend Dolly want to add Elder Dumo? I'm just wondering, because he's also coming into the, into the business committee. Yes, add him. Fair. I don't This uh, general assembly welcomes the new deputy clerk of the assembly, Leverend John Muraga, and the new honorary treasurer, Eoda the David Dumo and wishes them God's blessings in their new roles. Take care. Thank you. Next one. Moderator, I would wish to seek your indulgence in adding two um, on top of us. Yes, I guess because there was a narrative that was added, it would be right now to propose a resolution. It's uh, on the PowerPoint, kindly. Resolution on Bosco. Yes, this GA receives the report of the resignation of Mr. Bosco Kilu as an ordained minister of PCA following his marital issues. Further, this GA, having been satisfied that the presbytery has followed the due process for his right statement, grants Nairobi North Presbytery permission to reinstate him. Taken. Thank you. The other one, moderator, I will read. This GA appreciates the need to have 
a church encyclopedia capturing the history of our church as told by our own people. Further, this GA appreciates the work of the encyclopedia committee composed of some of the retired ministers and encourages the entire church to support them. Taken? Yes. Amendment? Reverend Jiroge? Father, this GA recognizes the Encyclopedia Committee as an ad hoc committee of the Business Committee. So that they report. They are asked for being a subcommittee, which is within, and now they are without. So it's an ad hoc committee. Is that acceptable? No. no. Additional resolution. Robert Gere. Thank you, Moderator, and my fellow commissioners. In reference to our seniors there and the resolution that has been laid, I had this one, Mr. Moderator. The GA appreciate the enormous work done by the retired clergy during their active uh, service. Further, the GA instructs the business committee to explore the ways and the means of forming a welfare committee for the retired clergy at the national level in order for the church to benefit from their institutional memory and their expertise. Taken? No. Why? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we, we needed a right moment. <laughs> Thank you. I think we are done? Additional. Thank you. Go ahead. This GA notes with concern the enormous work in the office of the DSG. This GA instructs the business committee to operationalize the office of secretary for training and personnel development and create the office of human resource manager and report in the next GAC. Taken? Yes. Taken? Yes. And you had rejected that <laughs> resolution yesterday. You. <laughs> it's seconded. Ah, okay. We are done. Okay, thank you very much. You can take your seats as we proceed. I guess now since it's 2.38, I know no other better thing than breaking for lunch, but I start advised. We now want to break for one hour for lunch and then come back at 3.38. So we want to ask, is it hospitality or worship? No? Announcements and then you can call the next person. Okay, thank you, Modita and the Assembly. We have a few announcements. One, uh, Moranga Presbytery. Members are requested to meet at the 10th next to St. Andrew's Church after this session. The resolution of thanks committee to meet immediately after lunch in the new session room. There is a found high pant, so if this high pad is used, you can check with me after this. Thank you so much. Modesta, sir, lunch is ready, and we want to ensure that we are doing our best, so we keep on changing a little bit. The hospitality committee, we need to be, all of us, uh, checking on what is happening around the tents. So here is what we will, uh, where we have been assigned to have a closer look at what is happening. Reverend Jane Karioki and Elder Mary Mogo. Kindly oversee what is happening at Church Hall 1. 
then Reverend Pauline Kanuthu, Elder Mary Wangombe, the tent at the kindergarten where our retired elders and ministers are taking their food. Reverend Deborah Mugambi, Elder Lucy Katei, the paved area there. And then Reverend Douglas Moshina, Elder Susan Jomo, Reverend David Mudoi, and Patricia Karanja. Kindly go and check what is happening at the ministers and the elders' tent. Please note that we will not give anybody lunch if you don't have the 